The first questions by the Metro Plex corporations will pay $5.2 per share dividend the next year, right? If you say the dividends will be paid next year, right? So this is the word, not D0, but D1, right? Wang means you will get this dividend paid next year. The company pledged to increase its dividend by 7.2% per year forever, right? So this is a growth rate of dividends, G equal to 7.2%. If you request a 14% return on your investment, right? How much you willing to pay for this stock today, right? So we want to solve the price of the stock, right? Use what? Use the constant growth model, right? Because we have the growth rate of the stock are constant, right? So we can use our constant growth model, right? We have a dividend growth model, right? And if a growth rate are constant, right? We have this model called constant growth model, right? We know our price on time zero equal to what? Equal to the D1 over R minus G, right? D1 is given is $5.2 per share. R is required rate of return, right? 14%. Growth rate, 7.2%, right? So $5.2, right? Over 6.8%, right? Equal to what? Equal to the $76.47. That is how much you're willing to pay for this stock, right? On today's market. So this one we call a fair price, right? For the investors, right, based on how much you want to return right, from this investment, right, you are asking for this price right, for this stock. So it is a fair price on today's market, P0. Next one, this one we will check the stock right, in a balance sheet. We have a T balance sheet. Left column is assets. Right column is liabilities plus the shareholders' equities. Lab liabilities including the current liabilities and the long-term debt. Right, we have the total liabilities. Right, then we have what? Assets, total assets. Right, minus total liabilities equal to what? Shareholders' equity. Right, shareholders' equity including the preferred stock, right, common stock, right, and also paid in capitals, right, returned earnings. So let's see the questions, right. In the balance sheet, the common stock and paid in capitals in excess of the par with the value what? $40,000 for the common stock and also paid in capitals, right, paid in capitals, right, equal to what, equal to $500,000. The firm has 40,000 common shares outstanding. If the firm has a par value of $1, what's the price of the stock originally served for, right, so what's the original price for this stock. You can see here, right? The common stock with the value 40,000. And we have what? We have the paid in capitals, right? So the total value of the common equities should be 40,000 plus 500,000 and equal to 5. $40,000 and this is the total cap for the stock when it is originally third, right? So this is for how many shares? For 40,000 shares. What's the price for each share? Will be 
forty thousand, right? Over what? Over forty thousand shares, right? So you can see four zero will be cancelled out, right? So will be fifty four over four, right? Will be one three point fifty dollars per share. Right, so our total cap, market cap of the stock, when it is originally third, should include in both the common stock values, also paid in capital, in excess of what the par value. Right, the par value is one dollar per share for each stock. Right, you can see here, one dollars per share. I right? have how many shares outstanding? So one dollars times forty thousand we have what? Forty thousand dollars for the common stock face value. Right? But when this one initially third to the market, the investor willing to pay more than the par values, right? So you can say that's called what? Paid in capitals in access to the par. So both should be the total market cap when this one initially third, right, including both the face value and also paid in capital in access to the part. That's why we solve this one first, right? Then divide by how many shares outstanding, we get the price per share. This is for the two false questions, right? The content growth model is an approach to dividend valuation that assumes a content future dividend. So this statement is what? False. Why this one's false? Because this part, right? For content growth models, right? For content growth models, the growth is what? The growth is constant, right? So it means our dividend is growing with what? G with the time, right? So dividend actually is growing right, with the G growth rate with the time, right? However, you see the statement that the dividend is what? It itself is, is constant, right? So this is not right. The dividend should grow in with the time, right? So you can say the two statement must be what? Must be the, you know, the dividends grows with a constant rate indefinitely, right? So you can say here, right? For example, if the diesel equal to $2, right? We assume it is a growth rate with 5%, right? So next period, dividends should be the 2 times what? 1 plus 5%. Right, equal to the 2 times 1.05 equal to the 2.1 dollars right, per share. Also, right, for example, D8 right, equal to 2 times what? 1 plus 5 percent raised to what? 8. Right? So you can see dividend is always what? Grow. Right? But the growth rate of what? Dividend. Right? will be what? Will be constant, right? The growth rate is constant, right? But the amount of dividends is growing, right? So what's that means? Means, for example, if you are runner, right? Your speed of running is what? Is content, right? So if your speed is content, it is not means you are standing at the same place, Right? You are actually moving, right? you're moving with our what? With our same speed, right? So you're moving what? From the, you know, original point, you're moving, you know, further and further, right? So means our dividend is what? It's growing, right? Next one, a firm has issued a preferred stock. And the preferred stock has annual dividend, $4. And you know for preferred stock, right? Dividend is not growing, right? So this means the dividend is what? 
it doesn't. It itself, right? Is what? Is constant, right? So for the preferred stock, right? The statement for dividend it itself is constant, not growth rate is constant. Right? Growth rate is equal to zero. Required rate of return for the preferred stock sixteen percent. Right? What's the price? Price of the uh, perpetuities, right? Is the payment of of what required rate of return, right? So it's dividend over what over required rate of return, right? That's the R, right? So it's four dollars per share over sixteen percent, right? So four over zero point sixteen, right? So equal to twenty five dollars right, per share. Next one, a firm is experienced a constant annual rate of dividend growth rate right, for 9%, right? So G equal to 9%. And uh, we expecting the dividends right, per share in the coming year to be $2.7, right? So D1 equal to $2.7 right, per share. The firm earns 12% for a similar Risk involvement, right? So our required rate of return, right, for this investment, for this stock, must be equal to the 12 percent, right? So what's the value of this common stock? Should be the P0, right? Equal to the what? D1 over R minus G, right? D1 is 2.7 dollars per share, right? Over 12 percent, right? Minus what? 9 percent, right? So 2.7 over 3%, right? So 2.7 divided by 0 0.03, right? Equal to $90 right, per share. You are planning to purchase the stock of the tax sheds, and you expect this stock will pay dividend $3 in one year, $4.25 in the second year, and $6 in the third year, Lion is expecting to sell the stock for hundred dollars on the third year, right? And if you have return required for this stock, twelve percent, right? What's the price you're willing to pay for a stock today? So we can draw a cash flow diagram, right? In the last video, right, we show in in a, you know YouTube, right? We have a one period model, two period model, right? And this one's for what? Three period models, right? So we're holding the stock, right? For total three years, right? So one, two, three years. On the first year, right? You got two dollars dividend, or three dollars dividend, right? Second year. Four point two five dollars per share on third year, right? You gonna receive the third dividend for six dollars per share, right? And also what you you also sell a stock right for the hundred dollars, right? So what's your price you're willing to pay? That right? should be you know bring all the future cash flow into time zero. Use our discounting rate twelve percent at twelve percent. Right, so this one should, you know, discount to time zero, right? The same, right? And also the third one, right? So the P0, right? P0 equal to what? 3 divided by 1 plus 12%, right? Plus 4.25, right? It's on time 2, plus 1 plus 12%, right? Square. Last one will be what? Six plus a hundred, right? Because on time three, you got another dividend, but also send stock for a hundred dollars. So total will be one zero six dollars in total, right? And this one should divide by one plus twelve percent, right? Cubic, the third, you know, the third power, okay? So that's how to solve the price for this stock, right? Equal to what? Eighty one point fifty two dollars. Right? And if you want to use our financial calculators, you can use our safe key, right? Price the safe key, right? 
and CO1 equal to 3, CO2 equal to 1.25, CO3 right, is 106, then price what? NPV, right? I equal to what? I equal to 12, right? Then you will go down to price CPT, right? You can see the answer will be $81.52 per share. Next one, and the year end, right? The, the end of year, right? This Tang Shen China company balance sheet show the total assets, sixty million dollars, right? Total liabilities, right? Including preferred stock of what? Forty five dollars, uh, forty five million dollars, right? And also a million shares of common stock are outstanding. Based on this information, uh, what's the book value per share for the common stock? So our total assets minus total liabilities minus the preferred stock right, equal to the common stock value in total. Right? The total assets equal to what? 60 million. Right? Total liabilities plus the preferred stock equal to what? 45 million. Right? So the difference will be $15 million right, for the common stock in total. And we have the 1 million shares outstanding. Right? So for one share of the stock, the book values will be 15 over 1 million shares right, equal to $15 per share. Right? That's the price of the stock on book values. Last one. For our rational investors, right, you saw the expected return is more is less than required rate of return on asset, right? What you will do? So this one is what you want to get, right? But this is what you are offered right, if you're holding this asset, right? What you expecting to have is less than what you will receive, right? So you will be not happy about it. Right, so you will sell the asset. Right? If you sell the asset, right, if investors are selling the asset, right, will drive the price what down, right? And cause spot return to what? To reach a level of what? Required return. Right? Required return. Right? You see, if many investors try to dumping this asset, dump the asset, right? So the price will, you know, go to deeper down, right? And uh, if the price going down, right, given you know the same price you can sell for this asset, right? Return will going down, right? Uh, until this one reach to reach to the same level of what required return. So that's the um, you know homework questions. But right? if you have any comments, please leave on the YouTube so I can reply you on time, right?